came about for me. I joined Plexus in February of 2015. Um, I was not looking for network marketing because I had done it before and I had failed. Um, I had tried really hard. It was a skincare, makeup, that kind of stuff. Um, company, great products. I love the products, but it just didn't work out for me. I worked hard and in a year I didn't even earn enough to get a 1099 at the end of the year. So, um, and I invested a lot more money in that business than um, initially I had with Plexus. So when my sponsor was reaching out to me about Plexus, I wanted nothing to do with it because I knew what network marketing was all about. I knew that you had to pay money, you had to buy inventory, um, you had to host parties, you had to work really, really hard for only people above you to, you know, see any benefit off of it. And um, I just wasn't, you know, I wasn't up for it. At the time, I had two little ones and I had just decided to stay home. I had been an eighth grade social studies teacher for nine years and um, had just decided to stay home. And I, I felt like I was getting bombarded by requests from people from different network, network marketing companies trying to get me to join them. And I'm like, whoa, 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 I just retired. I'm just home with my kids, leave me alone, people. Um, so my sponsor was super persistent, uh, which is actually good for me because I'm, when I'm reaching out to people, and that's what I'm gonna be talking to you guys about is recruiting. When I'm reaching out to people, I have a tough time not taking no personally, and I really had to work on that. But knowing how frequently my sponsor reached out to me and how persistent she was has been a good lesson for me to kind of keep in the back of my head. Um, so she kept reaching out to me. And finally, she didn't have any magic words. I mean, I have, I'll have people say, what did she say to you? What made you actually change your mind? And really, it was just the timing. Um, and so that's why it's also important to remember that following up is huge because you never know when the time is right. At that point, my uh, second had just turned one year old and I was still holding on to about 10 pounds of baby weight. I know this is like the story you hear from everybody. Wanted to lose the last bit of my baby weight. I didn't want to do network marketing, but I wanted the best prices. Uh, yeah, I'm that person. Um, and so I decided I'll get wholesale pricing. I'll join whatever. Maybe I'll tell my sisters, my mom and get, you know, a little bit of money or maybe get my products covered. And that was it. Um, you know, at the time I worked out really hard, um, five days a week. And I mean, hard I was running, you know, three to five mile sprints. I was lifting. Um, but then I'd come home and at nap time, it was time for my um, entire row of lemon Oreos. I don't know why lemon, but that was like my go-to thing at nap time and a diet Dr. Pepper. Cause that balances out, right? Um, so it, it, I just needed it for my health. I just wanted to lose weight. And then you guys know the story. Plexus works, loved it, whatever. Um, and so I decided uh, that I was going to share. I was going to tell people about Plexus because um, I heard about what the compensation plan was like and thought, you know, maybe I can make this work. So I made a, a goal. I made a challenge for myself. And I really encourage all of the people that joined my team to give themselves a time frame with which they are going to give their best effort if they want to make it happen. And for me, I decided a year is what I needed to give it. Um, and I was going to do all that I could and just kind of see where I ended up. And then at the end of that time, I could reevaluate if I needed to. Um, well, I didn't need a year. Things really, really took off for me. Um, I'm in Kansas. I'm the only diamond in Kansas. It was kind of like a, a wide open thing. Um, it was totally brand new territory. Uh, so that was awesome for me. Um, I hit Emerald in nine months. And then a few months later hit Sapphire and then a few months later hit Diamond. So it was about 15 months to hit Diamond. Um, and I mean, I just, it was pedal to the metal and I, I was just going for it. I was going to make it happen. And it's just been oh, so crazy. Um, financially incredible. That's amazing. But I think the two biggest things for me have been uh, the relationships uh, the reconnecting with my old friends, as well as meeting new friends. And then the other thing is just the personal development. I am a way better version of myself now than when I started. I'm so much more confident. I um, feel like I have more purpose, more goals. I'm driven. And it just, you know, I wake up every morning and it's not like, okay, time to make more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and wipe some more noses. Don't get me wrong, I love my kids. But, um, you know, just to have that extra purpose, something for me. Um, and so that's kind of 
that's kind of my journey. Um, as Amy said, I did, uh, I did just have a baby five months ago. It was my surprise plexus baby. I tell people, sometimes that happens when you get really healthy and you lose some weight. Uh-oh. <laughs> you sometimes end up with a baby a week after you and your husband officially decide you're done having kids. Um, but it's been a blessing. It's been fun and um, definitely challenging to have three kids four and under at home um, pretty much all day. I've got a little bit of preschool time in there, not much, um, but I'm still able to, to make this work and fit in the nooks and crannies of my day. It is a three ring circus, but I wouldn't have it any other way. That is my story. And if you guys can't tell, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a goofball. I talk really fast. I know you're probably thinking, how in the world did eighth graders learn social studies from this girl when she goes like that? Sorry, this, it's, I'll try to slow down, but that's just kind of how I am. I'm just, I get amped. I love Zoom calls. They're so much fun. Okay. So let's talk about recruiting. Um, and I think before we get dive into, so I've got, I let, I'm a list person. Um, before I get into kind of the list that I want to share with you guys, I want you to think about and this is at any level, you know, if you've been doing Plexus for a while, you can still ask yourself this, if you're brand new, ask yourself this. This is the most important question. How much success do you think that you deserve? Because, you know, you'll have people that they want success. Success sounds nice, you know, to hit the rank of Emerald is huge and that would be amazing. Um, but do you think you deserve it? You truly think you deserve it because you have to think you deserve it. Um, if you have excuses for not getting to where you want to be, that's basically telling yourself you don't deserve it. Can't take excuses and, and, and run with them because you will look at people, all the jewels, and you will find such a variety of people in different places in their lives. Everybody could have an excuse. Um, can't, can't work. You've got to work around your excuses. Don't ever verbalize them. No, that says you don't deserve it. Um, excuses are basically a free pass for you to fail. That's what you're giving yourself if you have excuses. Don't give yourself a pass to fail. The only path for you is to succeed. So you will make it happen because you deserve it. If you're not at a place where you feel like you deserve it, um, you're going to have to kind of backtrack and find some self-love. Um, and I think another thing that you can do too is really – Push yourself outside of your comfort zone because the more you do that, the more confidence you're going to build. Um, but gosh, you got to you got to feel like you deserve it. You've got to feel like you deserve it. Give yourself permission to succeed. That's huge. That's number one. Okay. Um, and I kind of touched on this a minute ago. Fear. Fear is something that um, you is inevitable in this business if you want to make it. If you if you quit, you're pretty much avoiding fear. That's what you're, you're doing when you quit. Um, fear of failure, fear of whatever it might be. In this business, we just work through fear. It's always there. I am still afraid to reach out to people. I still have to like hold my breath sometimes before I send those messages like, oh my gosh, she's told me no three times in a row and I'm going to send another message. Um, following up. I still get so nervous or if I have, you know, kind of a new acquaintance and it's that point in the relationship for me to bring up Plexus. You guys, I love Plexus and I totally want it for everybody, but I still have to kind of like, because I never want people to think I'm coming from a selfish place. Um, so I always, there's that fear, you know, that fear of what are they going to say? What are they going to think? Are they going to see my true intentions? So if you have fear, you're human. You're like, you're like me. You're like Amy. You're like everybody else. Okay. We work through the fear. Um, but you, have, you have to have the courage uh, to resist that fear, to master that fear. You're never going to be without fear. Okay. So what I like to tell my team is if you are not doing things on a regular basis that scare you, you're not going to grow. You have to do scary things. So I almost like for people to write down what scares you most out of this business or what are the scariest things or what are the things that you avoid in this business? Make a list of those and then schedule them into your weeks and do them. Because if you don't, you're not going anywhere. You've got to get through that fear. You've got to break through it. You are not going to, you can't sit back and wait for confidence to build up before you start going out and recruiting and start doing those scary things. Your confidence comes as you start to do those, okay? As you start to see the positive impacts you're making on others. Um, you're gonna hear no. 
you're going to hear no all the time. And that's a scary thing. I mean, I think a lot of us are, are afraid of hearing that no. Um, but really, the only difference between a diamond, between a sapphire, between an emerald, and anybody that's a not, not a jewel um, is we've heard no more. <laughs> I've gotten no way more than a, a brand new ambassador. I've heard it so much. And like I said at the beginning, that was tough for me because I took it personally. Um, and so this is something I've had to work through. Um, but, you know, I, that's how I've gotten here. I've just heard no so much. Um, courage is a non-negotiable with a network marketing business. You've got to have it. Um, it. That's the only, that's the only way you're going to make it to the top is, is, is working through courage. Um, please do not buy into the fiction. that You don't have what it takes to succeed because you are not like Jana or you are not like Amy or you're not like Amber. Or you're not like me. Huh? That's fooey. No, 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 no. Do not buy into that fiction that you don't have what it takes to succeed. Do not buy into the fiction that you can't find that superstar on your team to um, you know, help propel you to the next level, um, or that it's too difficult to find the right people. If you want it, if you believe you deserve it, you can get it. Your timeline is gonna be way different than your you know, friends, your sponsor, your dad, whatever. Your timeline's gonna be different. But if you truly, truly, truly believe you deserve it, you can do it. You just can't quit. Okay, that's really the only way you can fail in network marketing is by quitting and not uh, working through your fear. Okay, so you know I said I'm big on lists. Here's my first list. Um, these are what I call recruiting principles. A lot of them are pretty basic, so you guys might jot them down and you're like, yeah, I kind of already knew that. Um, but some of you, you know, that are just starting out it might be helpful to kind of think through some of these things. So the first recruiting principle is to know your potentials. Um, a good way to do that is, you know, if I don't know if you've seen those posts with the different color personalities, um, finding out what drives people. Um, you can't go to somebody who is financially, you know, doing just fine, have, they have ton, you know, they are not hurting for money and go to them showing them how much money you can make with Plexus. Um, you need to know what's going to be driving them. Um, maybe they're looking for something social, something fun. You need to go to them with that aspect of Plexus. You need to make sure that you are sharing an aspect of Plexus that is going to be appealing to each person. So it's not, we can't have a cookie cutter way of, of reaching out or following up. We have to know who we're talking to. You have to make sure that we are um, speaking to them, okay, instead of speaking at them. Um, pretty basic. Number two, you need to have some sort of a strategy that is going to be duplicatable, um, some sort of method of reaching out. So, you know, like I said, you don't want to have a cookie cutter that you reach out to everybody with. Um, maybe your initial reaching out could be just something, I know you guys have probably seen this, um, just kind of maybe last week, a popular uh, video that had been put out. Hey, I'm sure you've seen my Plexus post. Have you ever tried it? That's a great duplicatable way to start off, okay? Um, the follow-up then is where you would be um, addressing their personality type or what, what drives them. But a, a strategy that's duplicatable. Um, you know, a lot of people come up with something where as they have people that are interested, they th start a three-way message thread with their sponsor, the person that's interested, and um, they go from there, and it's a duplicatable system. There's not one way that is necessarily better than the other. I think each team kind of has to come up with that, but having a strategy in place that you can train your downline to follow, um, or at least give them an idea of how to start, because I know when, when I started, my sponsor was still relatively new, um, she was gold and so she didn't have something set up and so I was just reaching out to people and I know I look back at some of my messages and I'm like well no wonder they didn't join me <laughs> all the things I said because we didn't have anything in place well, having a system really really helps okay number three deliver a clear and concise message I'm sure you guys have heard before do not vomit plexus on people I know we love it and I know we're excited and I know we could write a novel about how amazing it is. 
but we've got to keep it concise. We've got to keep it clear. People are going to tune you out or they're going to see your email or your message. And you know, if it's paragraphs long, they're going to skim through it, pick things that are maybe just say, forget about this. I don't have time for it. Make every single word count. Choose your words carefully and make sure um, that it's, it's clear. Your message is very clear, not muddied up with uh, unnecessary wording. Okay, number four, connect with your prospects. Please don't just start messaging someone that you went to elementary school with and haven't talked to since then about Plexus right off the bat. Make sure that you're connecting with your, your prospects. This is a relationship business, so make sure that you are commenting on the pictures of their kids or sending them, instead of writing on their page, happy birthday, that's a perfect way every year, you know you can follow up at the same time, send them a message. Happy birthday, gosh, it's been so long since I've seen you. Um, I've been loving the pictures of your kids. Uh, just you know, wanted to say hi and, and I hope you're having a great birthday. You're gonna be on their mind sending them a birthday message. It's gonna stand out a little bit more than um, posting on their wall. In person, make sure that you smile, you make eye contact. Um, if you are, you know, in the, uh, in the checkout line at the grocery store, or if you are um, at a restaurant and your waitress isn't super busy or wherever you might be, you have those niceties that usually exchange like, hey, how's your day going? It's going well, how are you? Good, thanks for asking. Boom, and it usually ends there. Try to take every one of those basic exchanges at least two sentences further than what is comfortable. Find something else to add on to that, okay? You build relationships when you do that, okay? Add two to three extra sentences beyond what is normal and comfortable, and you um, have a better chance of building a relationship with somebody new. Number five, stories sell. Uh, if you were at Super Saturday, Kendra Randolph was amazing. I wish I could tell stories like she does. Oh man, stories are a big deal. Um, rather than telling people, Plexus is a natural uh, plant-based company that we sell, you know, we address inflammation, gut health, blood sugar, blah, blah, blah. Yes, that's awesome. The better thing that you can do is to tell what Plexus has done for you uh, and, and not a long drawn out story, but just hitting on the basics, telling what it's done for you, telling your story of Plexus going to be much more effective than, you know, just listing out the uh, textbook version of what Plexus is. Um, build relationships. Once you have people on your team, this is number six. Um, build relationships with people. People are going to sign with you. They're going to stay on your team and not go inactive. More likely if they have a relationship with you. Um, and if they have a relationship with people on your team. So that's where your culture is huge. Uh, your team page is huge. I always add my wholesalers to my team page because I want them to see what's going on on the team page because we have an awesome sense of community. It's a good way for them to build relationships with you and with other people on the team. I swear I have some people on my team that, um, you know, they kind of work the business, but they'll order every single month and they'll kind of post every so often. They're going to stick around because they've got, they don't want to let go of the community that we have. Um, and so, you know, that, that's huge. It's all about relationships. Number seven, it's a numbers game. It's absolutely a numbers game. You cannot be defeated by a few no's. Um, if you, for every 30 people you talk to Plexus about at one signs, there you go. You've got your number. To get your next person, you got to talk to another 30. Um, and it may not always stay that way because you'll be following up with people, but it's totally a numbers game. Um, you're going to sign people and they're going to fizzle out. They're not going to like the products. They're going to um, hit a roadblock and not be tough enough to withstand it. Um, few people have what it takes um, to actually have the courage to overcome their fears. So you have to keep digging for those dreamers that um, are not only dreamers, but they have the discipline. They have the determination. Um, keep going. Always keep going. Um, it's a numbers game. Number eight, it's never too soon to start recruiting. So if you just joined, yay for you, you made an awesome decision, but don't wait. Don't say I need my own story or I need to know everything about the products. 
Um, you know, I want to make sure I can answer questions. Uh-uh. Don't wait. It is never too start too early to start recruiting, to start building your team. Um, if you know the compensation plan at all, you know that the big money that comes from building a team. So you want to get going on that right away. It's never a problem to tell somebody, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but I will find out and get back to you. Okay. Um, if anything, it's almost, it can kind of be more appealing to others if you are honest and not knowing everything, because then they don't feel like, they couldn't do this. They're like, oh, well, she doesn't know everything. I could totally be a Plexus ambassador. You know, have not being perfect is sometimes a really good thing. So um, it's never too soon. Get going now. Start ASAP. Number nine, integrity is vital. When you sign somebody or if you're sharing the business with somebody, you have to set realistic expectations. Um, you know, we have, you can make great money right off the bat with Plexus, but don't ever make them think that this is something where it's just a, a cakewalk. It's easy peasy. Um, it's fun. It's awesome. But I mean, you have to work. It is, it is work. You can fit it in the nooks and crannies of your day, but you're, you're going to have to put in effort. So don't ever um, give false hope or false expectations to people. Those are, if you do that and these people don't get, you know, don't hit gold in their first month, um, they're, they're gone. Um, you have to have realistic expectations. You also have to have a genuine desire to help the people that join your team. So make sure that you've got that going for you. Okay, lastly on this list, and then I go to my next list, a lead by example. So um, you can't uh, just expect everybody on your team to uh, recruit and add new people if you're not doing the same. You've gotta keep adding new people. You want to go for any incentive that corporate offers. You want to go for it, okay? Try your best to hit it. Um, you cannot expect people to, to recruit if you're not doing the same thing. So make sure that you are leading by example in that area. Okay, that is it for that list. Pretty basic stuff, but sometimes we need a good reminder on that. Um, a lot of times what I'll hear from people, my team will say this a lot, um, Hi, I've run out of people to contact. I don't have anybody else. My network is so small. Okay, that is easily fixed. You have to fix it because otherwise you are stuck. So you gotta connect with more people. So here's my list for you on how to connect with more people. Um, first thing you have to know before I go into this whole list is you are an advertisement for your business. You are an advertisement. When you go to Target, you are an advertisement for your business. I know I've looked rough plenty of times. I've looked in the mirror and thought, you know, had spinach in my teeth and, you know, greasy hair, whatever, um, out in public. That's life. But, you know, when you can help it, remember you are basically a walking billboard. Would somebody want to be you? You kind of have to think of it's, um, attraction marketing and it's not only in public but it's also on Facebook so uh, or, or Instagram whatever you know you're using you have to be very mindful of what it looks like to uh, your network what your Facebook looks like or what you look like in public um, and I'm not just talking about you know having designer clothes no 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 if you knew my husband you know I my stuff's all from the sale rack probably from the sale rack at Target if that um, but just, just be mindful of what you're posting on Facebook. It's going to be really, really important, um, so that you are not turning people off. Okay. All right. But here's my list. Here is how you can connect with more people. Number one, and I was kind of leading into this, look successful. You don't have to spend a lot. That's not what I'm saying. Um, you don't have to spend a lot. You just need to make sure you're clean, you're well manicured, you are confident, above all else confident. You know, do you kind of walk around with your shoulders hunched or are you confident? I mean, do you look confident? Because people will want to join you if you look like something they want to be, okay? You've got the confidence and it doesn't, like I said, it is not, it is not your brand of clothing, it's not any of that stuff, but it's just having that confidence, okay? Looking approachable is number two. Do you smile frequently? 
Do you make eye contact with people? Are you the nice person that waitresses and waiters love? You are always saying thank you. You tip appropriately. Um, are you the person that holds the door open for others? Uh, that stuff is huge. That is huge. Um, you've got to be approachable. This kind of goes along with it. Number three, do you look happy? So this goes beyond just smiling. Are you the person, do you ever look just like super stressed? Are you constantly on your phone, unable to enjoy company? Um, do you laugh? Those are things that people are looking at. If you look super stressed working your business, who wants to do that, okay? Um, put your phone down when you're out with your friends. Um, if you have people over for dinner, put your phone away, okay? Just don't have those dinner parties on the last day of the month when you're trying to promote, that's all. Um, look happy, okay? Look like something that they would want to do. Uh, number four, be prepared. The other day I was at um, church. My daughter was, it was in the evening. My daughter was at choir practice and I was sitting in, I go to one of those massive churches. I was sitting in the cafe and I was reading a network marketing book and this older gentleman walks up to me and asks me about the book and was really interested and was super sweet. And he's like, you know, I'd love to hear more about your company. Do you have a business card on you? Huh? Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't have a business card on me. That was like the first time in my life I've not had a business card on me. And he's like old school network marketing. So he's like, well, you must be embarrassed. Yeah, I totally was. Um, have your business cards on you. Have business cards. That's a good investment in your business. It's a tax write-off. Um, it doesn't have to cost a lot. Have business cards. Um, if you're at a point in your business to carry samples, carry samples. If you've just begun, I don't expect you to necessarily have that. Um, you know, as you're getting further into your business, give Plexus as a gift. Um, sometimes I get nervous because if you just give people, you know, like my kids teachers, if I just give them some slim, I don't want them to think like I'm saying, here you go, chunky, you need some slim. So I always include um, some information on what slim actually is, what it can actually do. Um, and they've always liked that. Uh, you know, you can always give to uh, X Factor. That's a great gift for a teacher because they're around all those germs. Um, and so that's huge. Or ProBio 5, obviously you need to monitor that with them, be in, in contact with them if that's the gift you give. Um, but give Plexus. Give it as a gift. Be proud of what you've got. Uh, number five, your voice is a powerful message. So you've got to be confident, you've got to be enthusiastic. Uh, what I like to tell people whenever I have, um, whenever I have my team do a Zoom call, for example, or if we, we've started doing something that we call VIP Zooms, we're only allowed to invite one or two people on, um, and it's for prospects, and we just share about Plexus, and I have certain people um, give testimonials. I tell them, okay, what you say is important, but it's also how you say it. So I want you to Find where the little camera is. Look at the camera. So it's like you're making co eye contact with people. Raise your eyebrows, eyebrows up, and smile um, as you're talking because you can't you can't sound unenthusiastic if you're smiling. Like that just that was really awkward and hard for me to do. If you're smiling when you're talking about Plexus, when you're sharing it with people, your eyebrows are up. Um, you're going. It's gonna sound exciting. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that? You'll have to. I have to apologize. I was. Uh, former dancer cheerleader, so I've kind of got that weird peppy thing. I know that's annoying for a lot of people, but um, you know that's that's where I got the eyebrows up thing. It really helps, I promise. All right, number six, you got to represent health and happiness as much as you can um, because that's what our business is. So you can't be taking um, your car that's all wrapped in Plexus logo through the McDonald's drive-through every other day. If you have to go to McDonald's, take your husband's car that doesn't say Plexus. I'm just kidding. Try your best not to do things that go against what Plexus is about. Okay, we're a health and happiness company. Commit to healthy living. I mean, that's why we all got involved in this company. Um, we believe in these products. We believe in what uh, the purpose is. I, we're, you can't be perfect all the time. I'm definitely not perfect. Um, but trying your best. You know, and that's what you need to put out there on Facebook. Never, you know, share with people that you're having fried Twinkies at the state fair, um, even if you put a bottle of block with it uh, and put that on Facebook. Just commit to a healthy living and um, just know that 
again, you're an advertisement for your business. So you want to actually live what you are preaching to other people. Okay, so that's the end of that list. You guys, above all, you've got to have pride in your business. If somebody asks you, what do you do for a living? Do not shy away. Do not start off with, well, I'm, I'm a stay-at-home mom or, you know, I work. If you have a, a, a job outside of Plexus, you share both equally and maybe even, you know, Plexus before. Be excited about it. Don't be nervous to tell people that you're, you're doing network marketing. Remember, eyebrows up, smile. I'm a network marketer. I work from home and I sell plant-based supplements. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Tell me more about it. Or I'm in network marketing. I have my own business where I market top of the line supplements. Um, your confidence, your enthusiasm is infectious. People want to jump on that. When I, you know, I said earlier that I, when I joined Plexus, there was, it was just not in the state of Kansas. Um, still in my area, I don't know if you guys know Kansas City at all. I'm in a suburb of Kansas City. Kansas City is on the border of Kansas and Missouri. And um, where I am is called Johnson County. Um, it's a pretty big county. I'm, I'm the only jewel in Johnson County, too. We've only got a few jewels in the state of Kansas. Um, so it was really relatively new. And um, my friends were... Um, we like to poke fun at each other and we, you know, we like to have fun and people, when I first started made a lot of fun of Plexus and I swear I was so proud of what I was doing and I just kind of laughed them off and it's so funny how they've come full circle and I, and they will tell me specific conversations that we had had where they were trying to, you know, poke fun at what I was doing. And I came back and was super excited and enthusiastic and they're like, you just got me with what you said in that moment, I mean, that was it. I was like, well, I feel like I'm missing out if I don't join her because she's pretty darn excited and things are going really well for her. Um, and so that has kind of gotten me to where I am now. Um, I will say that I was not great at reaching out to people initially. Um, and as a teacher, that's why I kind of chose this as what I wanted to share with you guys because this is an area that I have got to work on a lot more. My cold messaging of people, my success rate is relatively low. Um, most people that have joined my team joined, um, I, I guess initially, it's gotten way better. I've, I've gotten a lot more of my prospects lately from my cold messaging. But early on, um, you know, my first six months, I, I probably was at a 0% rate. Um, I didn't know all this stuff. I wasn't doing things right. Um, my intentions were good, but I just didn't know everything. And so most of my people just jumped on board just based on attraction marketing, seeing what I was putting out there on Facebook. Um, but now, you know, my, my crew's seen that. You know, I've been doing Plexus for two years. They've seen what I'm putting on, on Facebook. They're not really coming to me anymore. I have to do the reaching out. And so I've really had to step my game up and I've had to learn a lot. And, um, you know, it's really gotten better. It's really improved, just kind of keeping this stuff in mind. Um, becoming a student of recruiting, of network marketing is huge. I'm doing that personal development. I'm huge on that. I love to read. I love to watch videos. You guys right now, just by being on the Zoom, that's huge. And I always tell people on my team, when they're on the Zoom live, it's like, you can watch the recording. Yes, things come up. But if you're on there live, man, that dedication, that's huge. And then if you have questions, that's huge because then you're able to jump on and you're able to ask questions. So Right here, you guys are doing, you're doing what you're supposed to. You're on the right track just by being on this call. So um, that is what I have for you guys. Um, I always hate this part. I'm always open to questions, but then it's like, what if nobody has questions? And they're like, oh my gosh, get her off the screen fast. We're done. Um, no pressure. No pressure though. Well, but if you have questions, I'm here. Honestly, oh, my thing's blown up. Um, you're amazing. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you got to share with us tonight. Yay, I thanks. learned. I have a whole thing of notes. I have a question. I'll start it off. Sure. And then you guys don't be shy. So unmute yourselves, ask away. Obviously, Jacqueline is extremely successful and um, knows what she's talking about. Um, but if you do want to message in the chat, that's totally fine too. So here's my question though. I wrote it down and I genuinely want to know this. How, um, 
okay, I'm a great recruiter. I'm just going to say it. I am an, that is my strength recruiting. Um, so I love everything you just said, but my, where I need to improve is duplication. So like I can get my dream rock star person and I'm like, yes, they've got so much influence, but then there's been so many that have done like nothing. And I need to know, like, like, I love what you said. You said a couple of really awesome things. Like ask the, oh man, where did it go? Um, you know, your strategy or whatever. So what do you do to really get people going that your dream person just joined? Well, first off, don't put too much weight on who you think is a dream teamer. I mean, we all have our dream team list and it's super important, but what I've come to find out is my dream teamers a lot of times are just, they don't, it doesn't, you can't make them want it. Um, and you can't give them the discipline that they need. So I guess basically my, here's what I do for recruiting. Here's what I try to train my team to do. We now with this new, you know, I've tried to give them different ideas of different messages to send out. Um, but I don't like things to be too cookie cutter. So I'm really liking the initial reaching out of, Hey, I'm sure you've seen my Plexus posts. Um, have you tried it? I, I'm loving that. That is something that from now on, that's been a new thing. We're doing that. Um, and then from there, the messages, you know, I'm just really trying to get people to make it personal. So that's not cookie cutter. What I am really working with my team on is those three-way message threads with potentials, um, as well as I touched on this earlier, VIP Zooms. Um, and I'll kind of expand on that. So basically what we do is, it's like an opportunity event, um, but we do it on Zoom and we call it a VIP. We only allow uh, each person to invite, it depends on, on how big of the group it is, it's either one or two people. And so when they're reaching out to their people, they're saying, we have a VIP event. I only have one invitation. I can only have one person. I would really love for you to be on there, no pressure. Um, I just hear, hear us out and we really are very particular about keeping it super short. Um, maximum 30 minutes. We try to keep it 20 to 25 minutes so that we can promise them that um, and that there is, you know, an end time to it. We basically, the structure of it is we have, um, when I, for my team, I'm the host. So I introduce at the beginning and then I give the conclusion at the end. We have uh, two health testimonials and two financial testimonials. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. They're not compliant. <laughs> they're just not. Um, we, we just share. Um, but I'm kind of like, it's kind of like we're all sitting around having coffee together, or drinking, you know, drinking some wine. We're just going to share what, what Plexus has been. Um, obviously, we're very truthful, but we're, we're, telling the, we're really telling the truth, not holding back. Um, and then at the end, we have a special offer. Um, typically it's $10, $15 off, um, enrollment and we give them a pretty quick deadline. I mean, it's usually 24 hours max, um, that they have to sign up and get that rebate. We're really big on, if we do a rebate, you have to have a backup order on. And a lot of times we don't even um, give the, the rebate until the following month with when that backup order processes. But the VIP events have been very successful. Yeah, um, I love that. It, yeah it's fun. And it's nice because you're not just like adding a bunch of people to an event page. You're, you have to specifically reach out. And I tell people to get them either on the phone. Number one, that's the best way. Number two, to send a message with a voice message and, and say, I have one invite. Um, please be on it. And some people have struggled to get people on there. So I'll say, you know, offer them a $10 Target gift card for their time or $5 to Starbucks for their time, whatever, you know, obviously it's going to be different for each person, what you, where you are in your business. Um, but we've really liked that. Um, and so it's been fun. Do you, um, do you do this for specific groups or do you open up to your whole team? I've never done it for my whole team because we like them to be small and intimate. So, so far I've just, um, I don't have any jewels yet. Um, I have three senior rubies. I'm really, I'm really wide. My organization is super I wide. So I, uh, I know I'm like, I want my friends to be jewels. Oh, I want I them know. there. <laughs> um, but so I've done it for, 
I've had, I've done it for two senior Ruby teams and then I've done it for okay. Ruby, senior Ruby goal. Yeah. So just like picking you two pick, like a level a one and their team. Yes. Yes. And do you offer the $10 or do you say, like, do you offer it for them? I actually don't. Um, I suggest that they do. I talk it over with them. Um, I suggest that they do. And um, then, you know, whoever would sign would match it. We usually do like a 10 and 10 just because I do so many throughout right. the year. You know what I mean? For these VIP Zooms, if they want to do it, the leader is the, you know, the one going to initially do the 10 and then okay. the sponsor would do with the other 10. Okay. I love that. Yeah. So those have been good. Those have been really good. Um, anytime you can get potentials to have that third party validation, not only, you know, hearing from other Plexus ambassadors, but seeing that there's other potentials there to listen yeah. is big too. They're like, yeah. oh, I'm not the only weirdo that wants to hear about Plexus. There's other people out there that want to hear about it, you know, kind of gives them that validation. So those have been good. That is so awesome. Okay. So I'm looking at the chat and so far it's just a bunch of, you are amazing. We took lots of notes. Oh, <laughs> you guys true. are so nice. <laughs> but yes. do, you, do you guys have any questions? Now is your chance with the Diamond Ambassador. I was a teacher too, and it's like so awkward for me to wait that eight seconds. Do you ever hear that? Like you ask a question, yes. tell the students to wait. Like you have to wait eight seconds to give them a yes. process. But I always want to fill it. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. So when you're, when you first got started, does everybody feel like they're just totally don't have a clue what they're doing? Oh my gosh. When I first, are you new? Is that? I'm not really new. I just, uh, kind of got out of it. I mean, I didn't get out of it. I've kept taking the projects consistently, yeah. but I just haven't um, had anybody join my team in forever. Yeah. And I just feel lost. Okay. So there's a couple things. Um, when I first started, you know, I, I'm not science minded. So knowing about the products, it was totally not, you know, my strong suit. Um, but as far as I'll have this from time to time and I go through my own, um, ruts or you know not getting people to join my team and that I know you probably don't want to hear this but it's totally a mindset thing um I don't know how much you guys I'm sure you guys do a ton with mindset but um verbalizing that you haven't had anybody join your team in a while I would that, what I would say to one of my leaders I would say don't say that mm -mm. you say I am gearing up for I've had somebody say it was a dry season I'm like you're gearing up for a wet season you, that's what you say. Um, so you got to first put that out there. And then I think the enthusiasm is going to, you know, that's going to be a huge part too. Um, you got to keep going. You haven't had anybody join. That just means you haven't asked enough people. You, it's a numbers game. Keep going with it. The enthusiasm and that mindset is so, so big. So um, I know positive affirmations probably sound cheesy to you. A lot of, a lot of you guys, they still sound cheesy to me. However, I've seen them be effective for me. Um, so if you, you know, you're looking to have more people join your team, you, you know, you've been struggling, then you are going to say to yourself every single morning, I will get new, um, new people on my team. I will sign new ambassadors this month. Um, and okay. you, that is just on your brain all the time. And I guess I feel like, I'm doubting myself when it comes to signing them. Like, how do you know what you're going to do to train them? And so it's like, that's part of the reason why I don't approach people. You, you learn as you go. So you get, okay. you don't know what you're going to do to train them, sign them. <laughs> and then you will figure it out as you go. You'll reach out to your sponsor. If your sponsor doesn't know, you'll go up the chain of command. Um, use, use your, your upline um, because they will help you with that. Um, you know, that's, don't worry about that. Don't hold back because you don't know what to do next. Um, I didn't know what to do next when I was starting out. I didn't know. Um, I would just, I knew people hosted, uh, conference calls or zooms. So I started hosting them. I didn't really know what I was going to say on them. I had no idea, but I hosted them. I got them started. I just, you just, you kind of like fake it till you make it. It's really how it goes. You just, you know, until things, things come to you as you are, are working the business, as you do it. So don't hold back from signing them. If you get to a point and you've signed them and you're like freaking out, you don't know what to do. You've got to talk to your sponsors. 
they will help you add them to Jana and Amber's page because there's amazing training on there so just make sure you connect them just like she said she added wholesale ambassadors just add them okay thank you guys sure there's another question on here from Britt she says how many ambassadors even wholesalers to to start a team page this is one where um you are going to get a different answer no matter what leader you ask and i think my answer is not a popular one um but it's my answer because it's what worked for me so i started a team page once i had like five or six people on my team so this is I, most people would say no wait till you're senior gold gold whatever i'm very different in my thinking i um i felt like if i didn't start a team page i was going to rely on my sponsors to be the leaders and i was just still like you know a minion just like trying to work the business just like trying to i had to throw myself into a position where i was the leader like i said fake it till you make it i was just going to figure it out um and so i ran my team page very different than my sponsor very different um, because I just had a different way of making things work. I needed to I needed to throw myself into a leadership position to become a leader. I wasn't a leader when I started a team page. Not at all. It, it was so important, though, for me. So I don't know. I don't know how you're trained. That's my personal thinking, though. Yeah, I think Amber and Jana would agree, because um, you know, Amber's my personal <laughs> sponsor, and I think I started a page at five or six people as well. Because Good. you, I wanted a central place to communicate with them. Yeah. That's, that's why I did it. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay. I don't know if this is a question. I have an ambassador under me that started one with her mom, myself, and a few friends. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure Amber and Jenna have trained us to be the, um, very similar. Just like you said, so they see you as a leader. I have a lady, uh, one of my team members started a team page but when she joined. Like, it's so cute because... Oh. Yeah. She, did, she didn't have anyone yet, but she wanted to prepare it, I guess. And yeah. I would see her. She added me, and I would see her post in there, and she didn't have anyone yet. But now she does. She's That's got team awesome. Like it was, I thought it was great. Nobody. I, I love it. that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's good. I really think doing, you know, not only having that team page, but like I said, I, <clears throat> it was before I knew much about Zoom. <clears throat> I signed up for freeconferencecalls.com and started doing conference calls, and I'd have to other people on and I wouldn't have a topic in mind I would just have them jump on and I'd be like okay what do we need to talk about what questions do you guys have and that was my training that and I was like madly like flipping through um we have a success plan from my up 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 line and like try to find answers they'd ask questions and I I just kind of learned as as I went I um, but doing those things are that's big that's awesome that's awesome very good. All right. Anybody else have a question? Waiting that eight seconds. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.